I love this thing. I wear it on my middle finger, and I give you one guess why. Because I'm sick of the state screwing people, screwing all of these gentlemen. A now that was Corey Sessions, brother of the first man in America to be cleared posthumously of the crime for which he was imprisoned. Corey Sessions was speaking before the Texas Senate Committee on Criminal Justice about a bill that would create a commission to police injustice in the criminal justice system. Sessions was speaking on behalf of his brother, Tim Cole, who was wrongfully convicted of rape, spent 13 years in prison and died while still incarcerated in 1999. One legislator, a former judge, objects to creating a full-blown commission when Texas laws are already changing to help exonerees. Sessions responded. That's your job to figure out what went wrong in this state. It's your job. You don't like it? Go find another. I'm sorry. I am just pissed off to hear that type of attitude. It's deplorable and despicable. You put a man in jail. You sentenced him. But you made it right. We're trying to make it right for a lot of people. House Bill 166 would create a nine-member Timothy Cole Exoneration Review Commission, which would review cases in which a post-conviction exoneration has occurred. But the bill never left committee, Heather. We've got both those men who you saw in the video are both here. Corey Sessions, who we mentioned, Tim Cole, his brother, died in prison. And then after he died, was found to have been innocent. Terrible shame there. And on his left, Billy Smith, who was exonerated after serving 20 years for rape he didn't commit. Corey, I, I got I to gotta tell you, I was worried you were going to show her that ring of Texas. Uh, you, were, you were very passionate uh, in that moment. Tell me what was driving you there. What was going on? Well, it had been her attitude. Uh, the actual chairman of the, of the committee had to leave, and so she was past the gavel. And the first thing she said was, well, as the chairman now, I get to speak as long as I want. And she immediately dove into the Innocence Commission bill of why it did not need to be done. And she rambled on for about 14 minutes, we counted, of why she was going to oppose this bill and was basically telling us it was not going to happen. It was only her and one other committee member in there. There wasn't even a quorum. So we knew she had already put her stinger on this bill. You're with uh, Innocence Project Texas, do a lot of good work there. Billy, you were there, Mr. Smith. Uh, tell me what this, we, we ought to, I guess, describe who's on board with this idea of creating the Tim Cole Commission and what it would accomplish. What would it accomplish? You're, you're an exoneree. Could it have helped you in the past? What would it do for you? Yes, who could have helped me in the past? Certainly because uh, it may never, I may have never got convicted. Uh, and it could help me now in the future that I'm out after doing 20 years. Me, of all people, having served that much time, I need to know the answer. No one has never, ever approached me or attempted to try to explain to me how or why I was convicted of a rape I didn't commit and why I did 20 years in prison and no one wanted to hear me. If it hadn't been for DNA, I would still be in prison because certainly I wouldn't have agreed to uh, admit it to a crime and again commit to make, yeah, yeah. Uh, to make parole. You see, so gotcha. it would it would benefit me in in a very special way because I would know. I don't want to go to my grave knowing that, uh, not knowing what happened to me. You know, people don't no usually ask for things that they don't want. We normally ask for things that we want or things that we need. And this is something I need to know, something that I've been wanting to know for 20 years. I can, I can and I don't your see, passion. and it's, it, it's, it's just, it's, it just gives me a bad feeling, rubs me wrong to know that there's even one person that was standing in the way of something, of some legislature, something that could make a difference in the lives of many people that's already been exonerated or had a possibility of being exonerated. Mr. Sessions, let's talk about it a little. This, this is not a committee or it doesn't do the work of the Innocence Project. It's not going to look into Correct. current cases. It's going to go back and, and try to answer these questions. The, the exonerees that have been exonerated, how was that case handled? Kind of what went wrong? Is that Absolutely. what we're talking about? Uh, in the last, uh, in 2009, Governor Perry set up the Tim Cole Advisory Panel on Wrongful Conviction. This is simply a continuation of that committee to formally make it a commission. And what that, com that committee did was make recommendation. It was bipartisan. We had people from both sides of the aisle working to come up with legislation. We now have eyewitness identification law. 
which was never on the books until this this advisory panel came into being. And, and I want you to continue, but in case people don't know, it's been established that eyewitness identification is is not solid at all. Exactly, it's the leading cause of all wrongful convictions. Period. And all these gentlemen and women who have been put in prison, majority of them were put in there based off of he did it or she did it with no evidence. What do you suppose is is it costly? Is this committee going to cost a lot of money to, to, to run? What, what's the push against it? The push against it is I think that the prosecutors associations of this state don't want another Ken Anderson like they had down in uh, Georgetown. Uh, the cost of it is zero. Mm -hmm. It's zero cost to the people of the state of Texas. It has a zero fiscal note. All the work would be done by the existing innocence clinics, which are at all of the four public law schools here in Texas, which are already funded. That's who would do the reports. The governor, the lieutenant governor, they get to decide who would be these commissioners. So to have a former judge who actually convicted an innocent man, Josiah Sutton, be against this, who's now a senator, to me, she has she should have recused herself, but she is steady there with the gavel saying, no, we've, in her words, we've done enough. And you were talking about Senator Huffman. Yes. If, if, as you saw, you said you hadn't seen that video. It was interesting. You hadn't I have seen, not that. seen it. How do you feel about it? Would you apologize today? Uh, you tell me. How, how do you feel about her and how that was handled? Well, she, she she's a... I'm not saying you need to apologize. I'm just wondering how you're feeling about it. You just saw it. Well, I said what I said. And I'd say it again, given those same circumstances. I apologize to the, for the outburst, but I will say leaving at 4 o'clock that morning from Fort Worth to drive down to Austin and getting back at 1030 at night, by the time I got home, my inbox was full. I'd received numerous phone calls from legislators saying, a, couple, a few, saying, it's about time. Because, you know, and we got to wrap this up, but you guys knew going down there at that moment it was not going to make it out of committee. And so there was a lot of frustration in the room. Well, no, we always go with the hope that we'll be successful in our efforts. You know, uh, facts is the enemy of truth. And I think that that's what's facing her. Shouldn't, because, be. Shouldn't uh, be the enemy of truth. Facts well, and truth should go right together. Well, see, when, when you look at when the facts come out, you know, when you put the facts together, when you get the facts, if the facts had been there, I wouldn't have got convicted. True. And one last so thing. So when the facts, mm -hmm. facts come, we you know when the truth come out, see, you know, then there's an embarrassment. Oh, I see what you mean. All right, why this happened and who's to blame. Last one we got to wrap. Go one ahead. last thing is we have the votes on the Senate floor for you passage. You just got to get it there. But you can't get it out of committee because a couple of members mysteriously disappear when it's time for a vote on the bill. But you have enough votes on the Senate floor for it to go to the governor. All right. We'll see. Next time, maybe. Next time. Corey Sessions, Billy Smith, thank you for coming in very much and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.